Hey gang, Maria here from HockeyTrainingPro.com. I am Hockey Strength and Conditioning Specialist, which means I help you do the right exercises off the ice so you can perform your best on the ice. Today we're talking about this thing. So this is, uh, well I was going to say my pelvis, but this is not my pelvis. This is, this is nobody's, this is a plastic pelvis. Um, but this is how... This is how it, it, it sits. So um, if I turn it around backwards, this would be me facing away. You can see your tailbone here. Um, these, are your, these are your sit bones. So if you dig in to, the, to your butt, <laughs> um, that's, that's what you're feeling. And that's sort of what you should be sitting on. People that sit with crappy posture actually come around and they're sitting on their tailbone with their lumbar spine flex, which is bad. So we want to keep it kind of Kind of like that. So we almost want this bony prominence. It's called the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. We want it, those, to sort of be on the same plane as this, which is called your pubic symphysis. So we would kind of like those all to be sitting in one plane, and then our spine comes out the top. So this is our lumbar spine coming in. You can see it a little bit there, and then coming around into our tailbone. But what I want to point out is that the hip is a ball and socket joint. So there is the socket. And then based on the orientation and the shape of this socket, you can get into other troubles if, if there isn't sort of an exact fit and you start getting some impingement. And then keep in mind with that, um, that there is connective tissue, ligaments, and a, and a thick um, joint capsule that surrounds all that that further can limit range of motion. So. We're going to talk about what kind of range of motion you should expect to see and some of the bony anomalies in this edition of your pelvis and you. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, humeral antiversion and retroversion. So we got Tyler here helping me out. I need to borrow a pair of hips. Um, so Tyler, could you lie on your tummy with your head here and your legs and stuff can be on the table? Yep. So um, all we're going to do is bend Tyler's knee up to about 90 degrees and make sure that his leg stays in line so we don't want his knee way out here. Um, and then just relax. And I put my hand sort of on the outside of, of his hip here. And what I'm trying to feel for is for his, I'll feel his greater trochanter, which is a bony prominence on the outside of your hip. You can probably feel your own there. I'm trying to feel when it is the most prominent and kind of in the midline of the hip. So for Tyler, you can see he's pretty stiff. This is actually, even though I'm moving his foot out, this is hip internal rotation. So if you think of the femur is rotating internally. So as I go from internal rotation to hip external rotation, right about there is where I feel it the most. So he is slightly, slightly internally rotated. So that's slightly um, antiverted, which is normal. Um, if I didn't feel the prominence until, say, he was here, or even like st straight up and down or in here, then he would be retroverted, which is a little less common. So uh, antiversion, retroversion, we wait till we feel the bo bony prominence on his femur straight out to the side. That's about him. So he is pretty neutral, maybe slightly, slightly antiverted. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see tight into internal rotation. That's why he's not a goalie, he's a skater. Thanks, Tyler. How many of you have seen, or even worse, done this? Like, oh yeah, I'm just stretching my hip flexors out. And I, I like it when we get a new athlete that comes into Revolution who, you know, they'll, they'll yeah, they'll fire right in here just to show how, you know, how flexible they are. They need so much stretch. And then, you know, we'll say, well, stay a little more upright. Oh, I don't, you know, I don't feel a stretch when I do that. I got to, you know, I really got to stretch them. The truth is, anatomically, you only get about 10 to 15 degrees of extension in the hip. Beyond that, I'm just extending, I'm tilting my pelvis. So I'm going to grab my pelvis again. All I'm doing as I go back further and further is tilting that pelvis and putting more arch through my lumbar spine. So that is not doing anything um, to stretch the structures that attach up in here and then down to my thigh bone and even up in here in my lumbar spine into my thigh bone. So when you do your hip flexor stretches, for example, you're only going to be here. So this is zero degrees of hip extension. You know, this would be maybe five, 
10, 15 degrees of hip extension. That's as far as you should be going. And then you should be trying to tilt your pelvis underneath you a little bit to get more stretch in those muscles that attach to the anterior or the front part of your pelvis or even the front part of your lumbar spine. So you can see how the hip joint and, and the pelvis work together a little bit. This is sort of, I can see this stretching into a, a full series of videos, but um, I want you to appreciate that we get great range of motion at our hip, not as much as our shoulder because our hip socket is deeper. The, um, there are some bony limitations to our range of motion. So you can see how, um, you know, Tyler was really tight into his internal rotation. Some of us are a little more biased towards internal rotation, which actually helps us get a little bit of a wider butterfly flare. But, um, you know, we can't stretch everything and make it better. Again, based on the shape of, of the, the femur, of the ball, of the socket, we're also going to get some bony blockages. Um, we can have connective tissue restrictions, which may or may not be improved with stretching or manual therapy techniques. So. This is Maria from HockeyTrainingPro.com. My mission is to help 10,000 players win more games with fewer injuries. I'm actually looking to put 10 of you in the NHL in the next 10 years and have one of you win the Stanley Cup. So let's get, let's get busy. We got work to do. Cheers.